to clock up this morning but first stop petrol station and get some ice so i'm heading uh 400 kilometers roughly uh east to a place called yellow dine uh, i'm solo it's, there's been heaps of rain the last few weeks really i don't know how much rains have um fallen out there uh, but i have been stuck before by myself and it's obviously really not nice but if the track's good and i get through it should be a really good trip. If the track's flooded, I don't know. So we get stuck into it. Yoo-hoo! Now we're hitting Yellow Dime, so I'm gonna fill up here. This is where the trip officially starts. So if you come to Yellow Dime, that's, that's about it. And there's a petrol station. And that's the main drag of Yellow Dine. In fact, it's the only drag. You drive around and there's a, apparently a spot that's pretty good for camping. I'm not camping. Here. Petrol station just there and where we've just come from, looking at the old train stuff, is the other side of the highway, Great Eastern Highway. And this is the track that I've been a little bit worried about because apparently it floods and if you get stuck, the locals aren't interested. Uh, I haven't aired down yet. We'll drive down and we'll have a gaze. I don't know if I'm gonna need to let my tires down. Sometimes you go along these tracks and yeah, if it does get really wet, they're treacherous. Other times, you know, they really do mean what they say. But apparently down, further down, right down the road, it says it's closed. In fact, this might be the signs up ahead here saying it's closed. But as I said, I'm solo. I've got no bull bar. I've got no winch. I've got everything for a recovery if I've got another vehicle with me. Danger, not all weather road. That's all right. I can handle that. What does this one say? Caution. Road closed. Enter at own risk, which I knew. I knew that sign was there before I came. been rain out here but the track's not too bad I'm actually gonna air down I haven't really needed to I just don't trust my tires as they are they're coming up to probably a hundred thousand K's on them now so they're brilliant I'm gonna air down just to help preserve them because there are plenty of sticks and stuff across the track there has been also dingo spotted around here so I'll keep my eye out gold fields when all the rocks kind of look like they're valuable but I wouldn't have a clue I think prospectors have been through here regularly so I wouldn't expect that someone like me is just going to stumble on a big nugget of gold but you never know yeah but look at this some water down here 
and up the top of the hill there's a place called Heaney's Find where they mined quartz. I'm not much of a mineral mineralogist so if you're into quartz that's where you get it. Whee! Oh, just about knocked off this guy. He's off the track now. I haven't seen one for ages. I used to live in the hills and they were everywhere. He was lucky. There I was driving along. He was minding his own business. Next minute, bloody Hilux nearly takes him out. He'll live to see another day. See you, mate. Nearly at uh, Mount Palmer now. Nice little track, this, to be a non all weather track. I'd say it's a fairly all weather track, but I haven't seen it in the wet, so I shouldn't say that, should I? If you've been down the road into Mount Palmer in the wet and it's been uh, treacherous, let me know. Just about there, just about there. Oh, look at this. Mount Palmer Hotel. Might go in and have a beer. I think the hotel's probably shut for renovations, I reckon. Bit of brickwork on the ground and stuff, so. I don't think I'll be getting a beer here. This is gonna be my home for the night. This is cool. It's windy, but it's nice. Very nice. There's designated sort of campsites for bigger cars, like if you've got a caravan. Just found a spot right at the back. There's no one here. I don't think there's gonna be anyone else here. There we go. Swag set up all of about five minutes to get that bad boy up. Get the um, the fire pit cranking. Cook some food. So we'll chuck the bacon in there, start that cooking, and then we'll put the chicken in there and the veggies. Dinner at sunset. Oh, it doesn't get much better than that. Check out the camp. How crazy is that? Another one. G'day, guys. Oh, they're off. See ya. 
<laughs> nice. Six o'clock. Damn, I had a good night's sleep. Get up, start packing away. Got heaps to see today. Sun's starting to appear on the horizon now. I got breakfast going. I'm having croissants with cheese and bacon, and then I'm just cooking the rest of the bacon as well. So I've got a mad feed for breakfast. Haven't got a lot to pack up. And I'll hit the road. We'll head west and slowly make our way back to the city but it's going to take all day we've got i don't know probably four or five hundred k's to do yet before we end the trip now on the road again we'll see what else the day brings Coming up to a, well, what is sometimes, I guess, a lake. destination um, and the entire way today sort of heads west so we're slowly making our way back to Perth so nice ending because I think I finished in York that's the plan um, whether I head back to the highway before that don't know but so far I'm clocking up the K's pretty well it's only 9.30 loving it
stopped off at a place called Frog Rock. Well worth a visit if you're in the area. Good for a lunch stop, no camping or anything though. Okay ladies, I'm after Nulla Nulla Road, I think it's called, yeah, Nulla Nulla, Nulla, Nulla South Road. Uh, oh, it must be closed. Oh, oh look what we got another one. Crossing guard duties. How's it going? You want to get off the road? I've just got a got my car. I'm just gonna go through. You cool with that? Oh, anyway, you have a good day. All right. I'll I'll just go the other side. Catch you, mate. Uh, some of them. They're not too talkative. When you're by yourself, you talk to anybody. See you, mate. Have a good day. Better put my seatbelt on. This is Jill Badgie Rock. If I had more time yesterday, I'd have camped here. This is amazing. Nice rock, complete with wildflowers. Very nice. Have a wander around here. Tell I'm definitely not very country. I love the country, but I just don't know an awful lot about it. I'm slowly learning stuff. All right, so lots of drive and nothing to see. So I'll tell you a joke. A bloke walks into a pet store. And he goes up to the pet store owner and he says, "Mate, I'm after a, a pet, but I don't want your average kind of pet. I want something a little bit different. I'm not interested in a, in a cat or a dog." So the pet store owner says, mate, I've got just the thing for you. And takes him over to a millipede. He says, a millipede? Why would I want a millipede? He says, mate, this isn't just any old millipede. This is a, uh, a talking millipede that can help you do anything you want. He says, you're joking? He says, yeah, watch this. He says to the millipede, mate, can you just go over there and just uh, help out that customer? 
So the millipede walks over and helps out this woman who buys a goldfish and walks out the store really happy with the service that she got. The old man says, mate, that's amazing. That's, that's just what I need. So the pet store owner sells him the millipede and he takes it home, gets the millipede out of the box and he says, right, I'll give it a try. He says, um, can, you, um, can you go over and uh, just get me uh, my slippers? So the millipede walks over, hoists these slippers on his back and delivers them to him. The guy's amazed sits down, starts watching the footy, and he thinks, oh, what I'd really need now, I reckon, is, is a beer. So he says to the millipede, mate, could you um, could you nip down the shops and get me a carton of beer? So the millipede walks out obediently and uh, shuts the door. The old boy's waiting and waiting and waiting. The footy finishes, it starts getting dark. He's thinking, what's going on? It's been, it's been hours, where's this millipede? So he goes out to look for him, opens the front door, and the millipede's still in the front door, and he says, Mate, what are you doing? I thought I told you to go get me a carton of beer. The millipede looks at him in disgust and says, He's up, Turbo. I'm putting my shoes on. <laughs> Let's go check this place out. Hunts well. I'm not too sure what I was expecting here. A well, obviously, because of the name. But I haven't found it yet, but there's a mad sick motorbike track. seen along the way I'd have about $20.75 because one of them was flat and then the other one was was just kind of a, a little bit of it but that's a lot if you haven't been out to what you know in the in the gold fields before you've got to do it you've got to do it if you've been out but it's been ages you've got to come back this is a great time of year September's sort of pushing it for the flies. If you've been out here, you know, anytime after September, it's, it drives you insane. You get out of the car and you're covered in flies. Um, there's been a few, I haven't really had too many issues with them, which is great, but I reckon give it a few weeks and it'll just be a nightmare out, nightmare out here. I've, I've only discovered the wheat belt in the last few years. I'd never really been out in the gold fields, the wheat belt, and I love it, I love it. I mean, I'm a beach guy, really. I grew up on the beach, so four-wheel driving on the beach is the best of both worlds. You've got the ocean, you've got four-wheel driving, camping, fishing, surfing, swimming, all that stuff. But I think because it's relatively new to me, being out in the bush, like really out in the bush, it's it's also new to me. I don't know, know much about it. I can't point at rocks and tell you what they are. I can't even tell you what's growing in the field over there, really but I still find it fascinating. And if you've got a four wheel drive or even an all wheel drive, you can come out to places like this and you can see the awesome places camp in amazing areas. And this is life really. We can't go anywhere else. You might as well see the state. It's so big, it's gonna take you a lifetime anyway to see it all. I've only got a couple of hundred Ks left to go, which is a little bit sad, but I think I've, I've fulfilled my um, my four-wheel driving desires for the time being. I'll be planning my next one as soon as I get back and putting this video together. Rock's called Shark Mouth. Can you guess why? Anyway, that's pretty much the last stop on my trip. I've still got a few hundred Ks to go. So I'll stop it and take some footage of stuff if, um, if it's of any interest, but I'll wrap up the episode now. 
thanks for watching if you've enjoyed it please be an absolute legend and subscribe to my channel and give it a thumbs up and comment i always reply to comments love getting them i've got heaps planned my next trip is going to be a hiking trip along the Bilberman track again and then i'll be out four wheel driving probably in well next month there's so much to see i've got so many plans i'm so excited the weather's warming up it's spring the flies are already here but you know you can't have everything but i can't wait i'm gonna head south oh man so much to see and only one lifetime to do it in anyway thanks for watching i'm dan catch ya